we have St. Germain. They are a worldwide company, uh, kind of the leaders in construction materials, and they have a, a lot of other companies that they own in different industries. Um, they're special because they have the integrated solutions for renovations of public and private buildings, and they have a very big focus on light construction, so environmentally friendly construction materials, um, and the decarbonization of construction in the industry to develop through a continuous innovation process and provide sustainability and performance for their customers. Uh, so they bring over 350 years of innovation to the industry, and it is fundamentally driven by their innovation and their practices of strategy that both shape and present the future on the light end of sustainable construction practices. And this approach ensures that they are in unparalleled stability and um, are able to maintain their long-term vision. So looking at their competitive analysis, uh, their vision statement is to capture their sales by becoming the low carbon building thought leader through bringing partnerships together between designers, builders, architects, and material suppliers. Um, we're able to offer custom solutions and comprehensive offerings for our stakeholders, which again are the architects, builders, and consumers, residential builders, and industrial builders as well. And our material factors are our customer satisfaction and meeting the customer's evolving needs. And for our metrics, we look at our net promoter score and maintaining and growing our market share. And by doing so, we send out surveys to our customers or potential customers to see how satisfied they are with our products and if they are helping them meet their goals of being more sustainable and decarbonization in their building practices. So one of uh, the goals for St. Cobain and for actually pretty much all companies should be, um, is to be best in class for ESG. And so to do that, we wanna meet and exceed ESG standards and, that are set and achieved by our competitors and our peers. So um, we compared two um, large international companies that have approximately the same um, annual sales, which were Bridgestone and Panasonic. Um, they, also, they all offer a very wide um, range of products for sale. So in that case, they are our peers in terms of um, size and impact of company. And then we also um, compared Owens Corning, which is uh, smaller than the other uh, companies, but they are in the same industry that we are and provide building materials. So um, we compared based on their CSR report, um, if, they're, if they had any sort of ISO certifications, their CO2 goals, their environmental goals, social goals, governance, and what kind of reporting that they did. And being that these are all international companies, they all actually score pretty decently on all of these. Um, where St. Cobain um, falls behind in, with its competitors and peers is in its CO2 goals. All the other companies had goals of 50% reductions um, or more by 2030 or 2050, depending on the company, and St. Cobain's is at, currently set at 30%. Um, where some of the other companies that we benchmark ourselves against are not as good as us, um, I say Bridgestone and Panasonic actually in the ISO world um, don't look as good. Um, one interesting thing to note though, those all of this data is based on their sustainability reports. I happen to know that Bridgestone and Panasonic have more than what's in their um, sustainability report, but based on what they publish, um, they don't they don't have as uh, broad offerings. And in governance, both Bridgestone and Panasonic, which are Japanese-owned companies, their board of directors um, is generally more company-focused and doesn't have as many others that are on their boards. Okay, so I want to say thank you to Tasha and Shannon for that awesome PO. 
up. So now we're gonna get more into like the stakeholder mapping analysis, and then we'll go through like the goals and the strategic plan, and then our goals, action, and then risk. So as Tasha just said, um, Finkelbane is a very large company, so they have a lot of different stakeholders that involve. We decided to highlight these primarily, which includes almost like the city general. But when we think about like the authorities, we're thinking about the governor or the government um, investors, civil society as well at large. So when we're talking about the entities, it's important for us to think about what it is, the action that we're taking, the employees themselves, getting them on board, and then customers being able to provide them like the solutions that they need and reliable outputs. Because sometimes with large corporations, we not we necessarily have areas that we are faulty in. We're definitely zooming in into that weak point of the CO2 emissions. So next slide. So these are the goals in the strategic plan. Our goal is to reduce the CO2 by 50% by 2030 compared to 2018, um, increase sales by 5% in the fiscal year of 2025 compared to 2022, increase sales by 10% um, between the years of 2026 and 2030 compared to the year 2022, our strategic management plan for this action is to maintain our competitive advantage, increase profitability through increased sales, and update our CO2 reduction goals in align with our competitors and peers that we mentioned earlier. So this is the goals, action, and risk. Um, we broke it up so you would know that there's there's gonna be two strategic teams that are focused within our company that we're gonna be focused on to be able to have them to come to pass. So team one is the CO2 data team. Um, we have four members broken up, but this could be four teams as well. So those teams are broken up for sustainable development, data analytics, um, sustainability, and engineering. Again, the goal is to reduce our CO2 by 50%. The actions that we're gonna take is develop metrics that demonstrate our CO2 profile for products. Um, as a large manufacturing company, we have a lot of different products, so we need to really understand how much CO2 each of these products are actually emitting. Um, and the risk for this, when it comes to any of the plans that we're planning, we have to know what risk is the demand for CO2 material products and CO2 data is actually kind of difficult to actually make sure it's accurate. And so we wanna make sure that we're able to, to verify um, the data. The next is our sales and marketing team. So again, I have four members of four teams. So we have the marketing, PR sales, and then actual sustainability. Our goal is to increase sales by 5% in the year of 2024, specific, um, specifically compared to 2022. Um, the actions that we're gonna take to get this done is to launch a marketing plan that intensifies the new ESG goals that we have um, starting in Q1 of 2024. Strengthen our relationship with trade organizations and architecture firms, thinking of like AIA, for example, making sure that we are able to help them and they help us. The risk is the quick turnaround. Trying to get this done within a first quarter or a short period of time may be difficult to accomplish, but because of our large scale of a company and influence, we foresee us being able to accomplish this. The other risk is unstable financial markets impacting um, building trades, so how quickly we're able to actually build things and what impact. Okay, back to, back to you. So our implementation plan for increasing our profitability through increased sales um, involves partnerships with um, architects and the building trades. Last year, um, St. Cobain actually increased their profitability, but it, they had fewer sales, they just had a price increase, which isn't sustainable, right? You can't continue to increase your profitability by raising your price every year. So um, what we envision is providing a one-stop shop for people that are interested in building um, climate-friendly, um, buildings from residential through commercial. So um, we would partner with the American Institute of Architects and the American Builders and Contractors Association. These are both like really, really large trade groups. Um, and what we would envision is a curated process that from design all the way through turnover, um, it's all, the, the building is designed to use St. Cobain products. The builders are trained in how to install them properly and St. Cobain increases sales. Um, one of the ways we would do that is um, working hand in hand with architects. Like, you know, we have a lot of prefab type building materials. Um, if you're building a large commercial facility, you have to design your commercial facility so that it can use those prefab materials. So working with architects, to uh, gain those skills and make them, help them understand our products and how they work. 
um, with builders, how to install them, how to sell them, right? I mean, the builder, um, the architect and the builder are the ones that kind of sell you um, the product. So you wanna make it easy, right? You wanna make it easy for the client who's either building the house or the giant factory to choose your product. And so that's what we are um, <coughs> proposing. Um, and what we see through that is that we can increase our sale, we increase our profitability through sales while reducing the CO2 impact of in the building industry because what we, these, these designs are, the, I don't wanna say designer or curator yet, these designs are intended to use specifically our low CO2 products. I just wanna add really quick, like prefab is prefabricated, so it's oh, built sorry. as this like, that, if you know that term, cool, if you don't know, but it's like the reason why it reduces CO2 is because it's not customized every time, so we're able to use prefab. Any questions yeah. on that? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, our progress will be um, defined by um, completing the data analytics um, at the end of this quarter. That might seep over a little bit in the first quarter of 2024 since it's already December. Um, have our marketing plan in place, first quarter 24. Partnership with the um, American Institute of Architects and American Builders and Contractors in place, second quarter of 24. And once we have trained everybody and we're, we're working towards uh, implementation, there will be quarterly reports of sales of uh, low CO2 products and quarterly reporting of CO2 um, as part of our, our monitoring. What we need today is um, for the board to um, give us permission to move forward with this plan which will require um, staff is staff that we need, which is at least four members for our data team and at least four members for our marketing team. We need staff to complete, complete the ongoing data analytics, um, staff to prepare and deliver training to the trade groups, and that will probably be something that there's a bigger staff in the beginning, but there will be ongoing training that needs to happen as there's turnover in those groups. And, um, at least one person or a group that is the designated liaison between St. Cobain and trade groups and um, a first year marketing budget of a million dollars. So um, thank you for your time today and um, as soon as we get your assent we can start on the project. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs>
Yours was 30% versus everyone else's was 50%. Uh -huh. That's 50% reduction? Yes. That's 100% He's like, He's like Panasonic and Bridgestone, I know well. And they're actually worse emitters. But they, they probably are worse emitters. But their plan, no. their plan, no. their so plan saying, is stated. So, so I wrote, I think this is about goal setting for lower emissions, and that's what you were saying, right? Correct. The, yes. red, the red dot. Yeah. 100%. And okay. to set the assignment. You know, he's in, he's in a pants right now. <laughs> well, <laughs> now, I didn't go good. You shouldn't send things to people based on the class assignment. Heather's firing people. <laughs> <laughs> If he's interested, St. Green is extremely transparent with yeah. all of their work. Um, their sustainability <laughs> report is posted on the website that has way too much data to explain to you. Yeah, you can read all of their we financial statements. We could have easily had a really large slide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so everything's outlined um, if you're interested in learning more about um, their company as a whole and how they divide their reportings because they're in all the Americas, Eastern Europe, Southern Europe, Asian Pacific, they're everywhere. And Heather, keep in mind, like the things that we did for this class are people that are outsiders, right? So yeah. all we have to go on is sustainability report. Right. We don't have their actual financials of all those companies or right. whatever. So do not use anything you thought <laughs> 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 you didn't know I had to get that claim from the beginning, but <laughs>